Latin Malaysian group is uh, going to be uh, going on a short-term mission trip. Again, you know, we said that part of our strategy is to go. So this is our chance to go. And we have a record 19 people in our group. Wow, this is the most ever, okay, in a short-term mission trip. So praise God for that. Thai, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, they'll be ministering. Please continue to pray for them. And then our other short-term mission trip uh, uh, members, uh, team, will be going to Brazil, one of them, and another one in Israel coming up. So please pray for these teams, okay, as we, as we go for missions. All right. And uh, all right, that's all the announcements I have. And uh, would you uh, now put your hands together for our dear senior pastor, Pastor Terry Wong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Freeman. Thank you for being our missions director. You know, um, it's so important for us to, to stay focused on missions. I know that, um, you know, some Christians, they say, well, why do I have to do so much missions and all that? Well, because that's God's heartbeat. That is the heartbeat of God. That's what means so much to him. And when we can align our heartbeat with his heartbeat, that's where we're in the center of his will. That's where all the, the blessings come as well. You know, if we're, we're only positioned kind of slightly, you know, just kind of off there on a peripheral, something that, that yeah, still, still means something to God, but not his, not, 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 not was really dear to his heart. Then that's another, you know, that's another thing. But that's why we position ourselves this way. That's why it's not all about ourselves. And when we focus on others, we find that God just pours out the floodgates of blessings upon us. Amen. Amen. So it being Mission Sunday, I have a, a missions message for you. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And I'm going to read um, not the entire passage, but um, two portions of it. So starting from verse 21. Let me just start reading right now. I'm going to read in the New King James Version. Mark chapter 5, starting from verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he, had, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. I'm going to jump down to verse 35 now. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a, a atonement and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all aside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. I have entitled my message this morning, Sozo Missions, Sozo Missions. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, how your spirit has been moving in our service, and we pray that you would move once again through the preaching of your word, that you would apply the word to our hearts, O oh God. Lord, thank you for leading us into a life of missions, O oh God. It's not all about ourselves. We are not living selfishly. We are living selflessly, O oh God. We're looking on the world, O oh God, because they are lost, because that's your heart. That's how you see the world. That's why Jesus hasn't come back yet, because, Lord, there's still people to be saved. And I believe that you want to use us. And so, Lord, I pray from this morning's sermon that, Lord, you would give us that challenge. You would give us that inspiration. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Some of you may have wondered, what a strange sermon title today. Okay? What in the world is Sozo? S-O-Z-O. That's in the bulletin. Right? Sozo missions. Well, you know, it's a Greek word. 
And in the Greek, there are actually three meanings for the word sozo. So I'm going to go over these three meanings, and they, they make up the, the three points of my message this morning. The first meaning of the word sozo, because you will see sozo found all over the New Testament. That, 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 when you look at the Greek New Testament, for those who, who are, aren't aware, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. So if you really want to understand what the New Testament is saying, then if you, if you take some Greek and you, you read the Greek, then you'll, 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 you'll see it, okay? And so, um, sozo, that word, is found all over the New Testament. The first meaning of the word sozo means save from danger or afflictions. Save from danger or afflictions. An example of it is found in Matthew 14, 30. Okay, of the usage of the word sozo in this context. Matthew 14, 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Okay, background of this story, we all know the story. That's when the disciples were sleeping in the boat, or the disciples were in the boat, and, and then they... Um, they saw Jesus walking on the water, okay? Very famous, even the world knows the story. And then, and then Peter sees, and at first when he saw him, oh, you know, like, like, what is that? You know, it's a ghost, you know, like, because like, they never seen a man walk on water before. And of course, they never, you know, that has never happened before. But of course, Jesus is not just man, he's also God. He's so walking on water, and then, and then Peter, you know, he, he, we know that he's a very adventurous character, you know, character in the Bible. And so, you know, hey, can I try that out too? And Jesus, well, step out and, you know, and, and walk. And he began to walk. And the Bible says that as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, everything was fine. But then it says that there was, there was a great storm that, that came, and then he started looking at the storm. Well, you know, when you look at something else, that means that the eye, what you were looking at originally, you're not focused on anymore. So while when he was walking, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and you've seen Jesus, his eyes were on Jesus. But now the waves are all around him. Now, so see, he's looking around, and so when you're looking around, you take your eyes off of Jesus, which is not a good way to live life. It's a good idea to always keep your eyes on Jesus. Okay? Now, you may say, well, I don't have a picture of him. I don't have a photograph of him. Okay? Well, of course, no one does because we, you know, th there, was, there was no um, iPhone, you know, uh, no Apple Corporation, Brandon, you know, back 2,000 years ago where they had, a, you know, iPhone 1 or iPhone 0.5 and, and, and they could click it and there's a picture of Jesus. There, there was no Kodak. Uh, a camera that could take a picture, okay? And, and, and so we really don't know how Jesus exactly looks like, okay? So how could you keep eyes on Jesus? Well, it's called the Bible. Because the Bible says that, that in the Word was God, was, was, was in the Word, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. See, this is, this is it, the Word, Jesus, you know? And so that's why it's so important, church, that we need to read the Bible especially the Gospels, to keep our eyes on Jesus. You see? Because the Holy Spirit will illuminate the reality of Jesus in your life. Well, see, here again, Peter is, is, is not looking because he's looking at the waves. And so many times, that's what happens to us. The, the storms of life come at us. And what do we do? While we're doing well, while we're, miracles are happening in our lives, prayer requests were being answered. Now when the storms are coming at us, what do you do? You take your eyes off of Jesus and you look at the circumstances. You look at the troubles. You look at what's coming at you. And what did the Bible say? Then Peter started to blah, 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 blah. He starts to sink. Why? Because he had his eyes off of Jesus. See? And I am 100% confident and sure that when you start sinking, when there's that mountain in your life, when you are sinking into your grave, your eyes are off of Jesus. Your eyes are off of Jesus. They're not as focused as they were before. You so focused where you don't even see anything else but just Jesus. It's like times when we've been here at the altar and wow, the presence of the Lord is so real. It's so good. And that's why encouragement, you need to come out to more corporate prayer meetings because the presence of the Lord, when you are just dedicating yourself, that one hour to the Lord, his presence is there. You're focused on Jesus. All the other, the troubles. The, the emotional stress, all that stuff that had hit you during the week, it goes. You see, 
And the enemy knows that. And that's why the enemy is always tempting us. When things are, are going bad, what, what happens? The enemy gets us to look away from Jesus and look at the circumstances. And we stop looking at Jesus. We stop praying. We stop reading the Bible. We stop even going to church. We stop everything regarding Jesus. And no wonder we're sinking. And no wonder we're in trouble. No wonder we're drowning. You see? And what does Peter do while he's sinking? Lord, save me. How many times have we cried that out? And you know what the Greek word right there is? Lord, sozo me. Lord, sozo me. Save me from danger or affliction. In this case, it's danger. Because he's about to drown. Sozo me. See, that's the Greek word right there. Peter was in danger. He wanted to be saved from danger. He wanted to be sozoed. I made up a word there. I had an ED there. Uh, Pastor Chia, I know that's not proper Greek right there, okay? But I'm, co I'm contemporizing it for you, especially for the straight-up guys over there, right? You want to hear some contemporary words. Tons of people in the world want to be safe from danger. You know, so many people out there. You know, all sorts of dangerous situations that they have gotten themselves into or the devil has threw at them. Somebody needs to save them. Somebody needs to sozo them. And who's going to do it? Is the government going to do it? Well, they try, but they're limited. You know, we got a president who's trying really hard, but he's got the good portion of the government fighting him all the time. That's not going to do it. It says, sozo is to be saved from danger or afflictions. Look at Luke 8.48. Luke 8.48. It says, then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you, go in peace. Now, I preached a sermon uh, uh, just shortly, and I, I preached from this passage a lot. This is where uh, Jesus was actually on his way, okay, to do a healing. And then there was a crowd around him, and this woman who had an issue of blood. You might remember this, this message just not, not, not too long ago. And, and what happened was that she fought through the crowd. She touched the hem of his garment, because that's what she can do, because he's all surrounded by the crowd. But because... She was able to touch the hem of his garment. It's, the Bible says that the healing virtue from Jesus came out from him and touched her. And then she was healed. Okay, The issue of blood, the, the, the constant bleeding. And then Jesus, he just stopped. He said, hey, who touched me? And the disciples who were with him said, us, we're all touching you. You know, the crowd, we're all touching you. You know, like, 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 that's the answer. We all. No, no. There was a special touch. Somebody who's crying out. Somebody who wanted a sozo. You see? Saved from affliction. Somebody cried out. I know who it is. And, and, then, and then the woman, you know, just, just shaking. Oh, oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, no. You know, like I, I could just kind of get in there, get a blessing, and get out of here. Okay? Let, let me tell you. Okay? When it comes to Jesus, he notices everything. You can't get away with anything with him. And, and, and then she says, it was, it was me. Was that okay? Was it okay? I know I'm, not, I'm a woman, and that's already a bad thing because a woman's not supposed to do something back in that culture, you know. And, and then I'm not one of the apostles, you're 12. I'm not, I'm not a very important person and all that. And, and, and she looked at herself, and she was shaking. Then Jesus said, daughter, your faith has sozo you. That's the Greek word right there. Has sozo you. Okay. Now, just to let you know, okay, I just did a, a recent training here with some of the leaders, okay? There's actually four Greek words for healing, okay? We're not going to get into it right now. But sozo is one of them, and here it is. He has saved you from affliction, the affliction of a sickness. See, your faith has sozoed you. The woman had the blood disorder affliction. She wanted to be saved from her affliction. She wanted to be sozoed. Let me tell you, there's tons of people in this world. That won't be safe from the affliction. Because who likes pain? Who wants to live with pain if there's a way out? Nobody likes pain. Well, what's the mission's message? Jesus can sozo people from their danger and afflictions. A um, couple of weeks ago, as I mentioned, I was um, at City Impact again. Uh, Pastor Roger and I, we're, 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 we're doing a lot of things this year. You know, he's... He, he just recently came out. He's going to come out again in a few more months. And, um, well, anyways, um, normally when, I, when I'm there, he puts me in a hotel. 
This time, he said, you know, Pastor Terry, I hope you're not going to be offended. I want you to stay in our, in our apartment building, okay? We just renovated everything. We're still working on it, and I want you to know, I personal, personally did some of the renovation, okay? Now, I believe him because, you know, one time he, uh, he stayed at our house, and, and um, Vicky and I had to, to leave to run some errands and all that. A couple of hours later, we came back, and parts of our house were all renovated, okay? And we go, what happened here? Like, you know, some things that, that we had mentioned that we should be doing, and, 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 and we didn't know when we were going to get to and all that. Well, Pastor Roger did it. You know, he drove down the hill, went to City Mill, bought the supplies and all that, and, and fixed up parts of our kitchen, our bathroom, and all that stuff. And I go, where'd you learn to do that? Oh, I, I do that all the time. I, 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 you know, I, I fixed up my own home, too, and all that. And, well, anyways, this, this big building, okay, like it's multiple stories, okay, in, you know, one of his eight buildings that he has as part of his City Impact Ministry. Some of you, many of you have been to, to his ministry, okay? Well, well, he's taking pride in it because, like, even, even the bathroom door, just solid oak, at least the one I was in, okay? <laughs> I don't know if that's a special one, okay? But, but like, like, even the toilet, okay? And, and because of that, you know, board, deacons, okay? Uh, uh, I got inspired, okay? The toilet flushes everything. No, you guys, some of you who are laughing, you know what I'm talking about. Because sometimes our toilets don't flush everything, okay? And it's gross. You got to wait, wash your hands, and then and wait, and then you're going to flush again, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, this toilet, man, it, it, I'm telling you, you put, you put a shot put in it or a football, it will flush it down. It's so powerful. Just, I mean, I couldn't believe it, right? Oh. And, of course, with that, it flushes all the smell, too. I mean, it was a good toilet. Anyways, he tells me he did it himself. I said, you got to be kidding. Yeah. So hopefully you're not offended because, you know, because uh, uh, you're used to me putting you in a hotel. I want you to stay in one of these rooms. Okay? I said, oh, I'm fine. I, I'm cool. You know, I, I go on a mission trip. I go to these third world countries. Sometimes it's in, you know, places with no bathroom. It's okay. It's okay. Right? And, and so he puts me in. And, and, and I had arrived like about 10, 10, 10 15 uh, uh, at night. And so I uh, arrived there. He had one of his, his people meet me, open up the parking lot. Because, you know, if you don't park in his parking lot, it's really expensive, okay? I mean, we're talking, you know, like, like I think $56 a day now. This is San Francisco, okay? $56 a day, okay? But parking his lot, free, okay? So, so I parked there, and, and the guy let me in, and it was somebody who, who I'd never met before, right? So, so like, like he came up to me and says, are you Pastor Terry Wong? You know, he says, yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Rogers says, some, some Chinese guy is going to come and all that. Well, I'm Chinese. I'm here, here I am, right? And then he says, okay, well, let me show you to your room, okay? And he's a big guy. Like, he, he's like 6'5 or something like that, okay? Really big. Like, like you're 6'4, right, Freeman? He's a little taller than you, right? Uh, but he's skinny, okay? He's not, not a basketball player like that guy, okay? He's, not, he's non-athletic. But he, he grabs my suitcase, and my suitcase is 64 pounds. Okay, I know that because... You know, on, on, you know, when I check in at the airport, it's, it's measured, I can see 64 pounds. And the reason why, because wherever I go on my trip, I've got, I've got textbooks with me, okay? Because, as you know, this year, I'm trying to really finish off my doctorate program and all, so I bring all my textbooks and all that, so that's what makes the suitcase heavy, right? So he's going like this, and, and, and you know, he's a big guy, but, and, 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 and the size of it is not the thing, but he's not very strong, right? He's not a very strong guy. But, but he's going, I said, I can carry it myself. No, 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 you're a little guy. I said, yeah, but then I didn't want to say it, you know, but you're a toothpick, you know, I, I didn't want to say it. I, I, I was thinking that, but, but he insists, no, 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 Pastor Roger will be so angry at me if I don't carry it. I said, but it's okay, it's not heavy for me, I'm used to it. No, 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 I gotta do it, right? And so he's struggling, and up this, up this. I mean, you know, this building has no elevator, by the way, okay? And so, so, just, and we're like on the third floor, okay? And he's going up, okay? and you know, like, like, I really feel sorry for him. Can I help you? No, 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 no. If you touch it, Pastor Roger would be mad at me. I says, okay, okay. I don't want anybody to get angry, right? You know? And finally, he gets in the room and all that, right? And he's huffing and puffing. And, and, and like he, he's, you know, like, 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 like just on the table, just, oh, oh. I said, I guess you don't work out, do you? He says, oh, no, this is my workout. This is it, right? I says, yeah, well, I think you need to do more of it. You know, no, I, I thought that. I didn't say it. You know, I was trying to be nice and all that, right? And so he shows me. He says, here's the bathroom. Here's the toilet. It's really powerful. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and he showed me all that. And then um, 
It's okay, well, if you need anything, there are towels here and all that stuff, and everything should be fine for you. And, and do you need a wake up call in the morning? Oh, no, 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 I got my iPhone. I can, you know, wake myself up and all that. He says, okay, okay. Well, uh, now I flew in on a Saturday night, okay? He says, well, remember, Pastor Roger would like you in his office at 10 o'clock. Does that give you enough time? Oh, plenty of time. I don't, I don't sleep very much. He says, Yo, I don't either. I says, well, how come you don't sleep much, right? You, you type A personality or whatever? Oh, no. I, I can't sleep. I said, what do you mean you can't sleep? You're, you, you're a pastor, right? I says, yeah, 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 you even called me that. I says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm afraid to go to sleep. I said, why are you afraid to go to sleep? Because every night I get these nightmares of some creature that's about to kill me. And so in my dream, I wake up before that creature kills me. I said, how long has that been going on? I don't know. It started years ago, but then it, it could disappear. But I would say maybe, maybe three months every night. Three months every night? Yeah. You may not believe this, but I used to be pretty buff. I said, yeah, I'm trying to imagine that. <laughs> to be cordial, you know, but he was serious, right? You know, I says. So, so, like, what happened? Well, well, because I get these nightmares, I don't sleep much. And because I don't sleep much, I don't eat much. Because I don't eat much, I don't have energy. Exercise, this is my exercise. You know, like, like, like I'm trying, I would like to be buff again, but, you know, that's my situation. I says, wow, that's terrible. So I know, I know, you know, and, and uh, anyways, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. I said, no, 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 no. Do you want a good night's sleep tonight? Um, I don't even, I can't even dream about a good night's sleep anymore. I said, you know what? Then you got to start dreaming now. Because I'm telling you, God made you to be a holistic human being. You're not just, and by, the, by the way, who, who are you anyways? He says, well, you know, I'm from Virginia, and this is my fourth day, fourth day here at City Impact. I heard about the ministry here. I came here, and I thought that might heal me. But the yeah, first three nights, I haven't slept either. It's like, like this thing has been following me from Virginia to San Francisco. I came here to volunteer to give my life to, to, to City Impact for a few months, you know, because they, they have an internship program. I got accepted. I'm here. And, 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 and I says, okay, so you've been three nights. Okay, fourth night. Let's get you healed. And he says, I would love that. I says, okay, you got to believe that. Okay? God made you a holistic being. That means... That you aren't just to serve him and, 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 and your whole body withers away and your mind goes nuts on you and look at you, okay? It's time for you to get your healing so you can really serve him and you can have a really good internship. Will you believe that? He says, okay, okay. You know, Pastor Roger told me that, that, that your sermon tomorrow will inspire me. But boy, you're preaching to me now. I says, yeah, you know, let, let's, let's get on with it, right? Says, okay, okay, pray for me, pray for me. And your hands lifted up and all that, right? And then, and then I, I lay your hands and I prayed for, for, for a sound mind. Because that's what the Bible says, right? Did not give it. He, he's fearing going to sleep because he might die in his dream. Because that's what they say. Some psychologists even say that. If in your dream you actually die, you actually physically die because your heart can't take it. That's why they say that, that, that when you jump off, you know, if you dream and you jump off a cliff, if you hit the bottom, you die. Not, not just in dream, physically. That's what, not in all cases, but especially people who have a weaker heart, can't take it, they literally die. And that's why he doesn't want to go to sleep because he thinks if he dies in his dream, he dies physically. Okay? So I pray for him, and I said, that, Lord, you know, uh, you made him to serve you, and he, he should not be having these kind of dreams. He's tearing it up, and he should have a sound mind, something right here, because he's been fearing. He needs power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name, amen. I said, go to sleep now. Like, I was so fired up. And, you know, by this time, it's like about almost midnight, okay? And, and, and so I'm all fired up and all that. And then he said, okay, bye, Pastor Terry. See you in the morning at church and all that. Okay, okay, see you. Okay, he said, know the address? Yeah, yeah, I already got that. I've I, I been there before. So then he went to his room. He's sleeping in the same, same building. So I was so moved by this. I spent like probably another half hour just praying, just interceding for this, for this brother. And I said, Lord, I've never encountered this before. Nobody ever told me this before, you know, that, that you're afraid to go to sleep. And then you're having this dream. And, and I said, demons, in the name of Jesus, I bind you up. How dare you do that to a, a you know, he was a young guy. He, like, I think he was 24, 25 years old. You know, trying to make something of his life, serving God and all that. He's going through this. 
and I prayed for him, and I, I kept on praying and all that, and the next morning, okay? So I get up, and um, I, I, go, I go to um, uh, Pastor Roger's office, and he's got his team in his office. Uh, some of you who've been there, you know his office, and we're all sitting around, and, and, and they're all joking, and, and they, that's what they start. They joke first, and, 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 and then I come in, and, oh, it's Pastor Terry, and yeah, Pastor Terry, you have a Chinese joke for us? I, was, Shh, I, don't, have a, I don't have a Chinese joke. And then, and then Pastor Roger imitates me, you know. I'm not going to do whatever he does. He, he imitates me, the, you know. And, and I was, that's not me. Said, that's not me. You know, you know, that's what he did. <laughs> copies me anyways after that okay then we pray and we go into service okay and then i preach for him and then afterwards that that guy that brother okay came up to me okay and his eyes were wide eyes okay because i remember the night before he had red shot eyes he has me sleeping okay eyes are like big eyes there's no red i could see anywhere and he said pastor terry thank you for praying for me i says really yeah, last night was the first time I got a good night's sleep. No de- no, no death, nothing. I woke up, and look, I look in the mirror. You see my eyes, I, say, I can see it. He says, look, all clear. Thank you. Wow, you, you know, God used you to heal me. That's sozo. That's sozo. Saving from danger or affliction. It's danger, big time. It's affliction because, he, because of the, the, this... Inability to, to be able to dream properly, sleep properly, and the danger was that he could die. Big time. That, uh, wow. As I was preparing my sermon, I thought, that, that's, that's the first meaning of sozo right there. And you know what? That's, what? that's what Peter was crying out for. Sozo me. That's what this woman with the issue of blood was, was crying out for. Sozo me. Heal me. Save me from the danger and affliction. The second meaning is save from eternal destruction. Sometimes you see this word, sozo, in the New Testament Greek. It means save from eternal destruction. Let me read you a passage here where it's found. Luke 19, 9 and 10. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Okay, here's the story here. And by the way, those who are signed up for the encounter, this is for you. I'm dedicating this example for you right now. There was a man, um, a Pharisee, a, 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 a tax collector, Zacchaeus. Okay, sometimes I preach this sermon um, on the opening night of the encounter, but I'm not going to because I'm doing it now. Okay. Zacchaeus was a uh, physically short guy. Jesus comes on the scene, and there's a crowd around him. Uh, you know, everywhere Jesus went, there's a crowd. Okay, because like he he's the superstar of the land, and so being a short guy, I can totally relate to this. Okay? He wants to see Jesus. Can't see it. Okay? And I've done this. I've been in a crowd. Freeman's in front of me. I can't see a thing. All I see is his backside. That's all. Okay? It frustrates me. You know, I just hope that when I go to heaven, I get a new body, and I'm going to be taller than Freeman. Okay? I hope I can dunk over him in, in heaven. I hope I can do that. Okay? But whatever God wants for my life, you know, keeps me humble. Whatever. Okay? And anyways. Well, that's what Zacchaeus was. And he can't see Jesus. So what does he do? He gets up a tree. So that he can see. And I can totally relate to this too. Okay, you got to climb up somewhere else so that you can kind of see down on the crowd, right? To see what, what they're all looking at, right? Jesus sees him and says, Zacchaeus, I must have a meal with you. Now, the Pharisees who are listening, what? what's all this? What's going on here? This, see, this shows that he's not the Messiah. Because no Messiah would have dinner with a sinner. Because him being a tax collector, okay, um, he would, he's a thief. He would collect people's taxes and collect more than, than was due, and then he would pocket for himself. That's well known, okay? You can't do anything about it because these tax collectors, they're smart. They, got, they, they can talk the legal jargon and, and mix you all up, and, and most people were not educated, and so, so they just, you know, they, they were thieves, okay? Everybody knew there's thieves, there's sinners. So you don't, you don't you know, if you're a holy man, you don't, you don't mix with those people who aren't so holy the sinners out there. And it's unfortunate that, that in some churches, that's the way, that's their attitude too. Oh man, those people, you know, eh, eh, homeless people, oh, the drunker and all that, we don't, we don't relate with them. Until they clean themselves up, they're not welcome in the church. I'm so glad Jesus is not like that, you know? And certainly Calvary's not like that either. That's why we do some of our programs, okay? Reaching out to those who are the Zacchaeus of this world. Well, Jesus goes to his house, okay? He has, Zacchaeus has an encounter with Jesus. 
and those who are signed up for next weekend, that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to have encounter with Jesus. And don't worry, Jesus is not like a Pharisee. He will not put you down. He will not persecute you. He will not swear at you. He will not, he will not say th belittling things about you. Jesus will not do that. He's a gentleman. He will minister to you. He will cause such a transformation in your heart. You can be a new person. You can be a new person. And people say, oh, what well, change in your life? Okay, don't be surprised. Because see, it all starts on the inside out. Right? You can do whatever makeup you want. Like my son, I found out. He put makeup on himself. I could not believe it. That was a shock for me when I found out last night. Man, who's your daddy? Because not me. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, no, no. Okay, I got I to gotta confess. Okay, one second. Can I just one second? Okay, me, now that I just thought of it, maybe he did learn from me. When I was, okay, the first time Vicky met me, or one of the first few times Vicky met me, she met me when I was a girl. <laughs> what was going on? What is this transgender stuff? Is that what's going on? No, because okay, a friend of mine, we were in the skit team, and so in the skit team, we used to dress like, a, like girls, okay? High heel, nylon, the whole thing, okay? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. That's why sometimes visitors from Canada, when they come here, says, we got some stories about your past, and they really do. Okay, I was like that. Okay, and so, of course, I know Brandon knows that, so maybe that explains why he put on makeup. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did more than that. Anyways, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hey, we're family. I can be honest with you guys, right? I'm not fault-free. I mean, <laughs> hey, man, I, I, Jesus had to save me from some danger. <laughs> he had to sozo me too. Anyways, okay, let's get back to this. So Zacchaeus had this incredible encounter with Jesus, okay? And so what, what did he do? He felt so remorseful of the sins that he committed, namely stealing from people. He said, I will give back to them. I'll even give up to four times the amount because he felt so bad. Four times the amount. That's what caused Jesus to say, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to see, seek and sozo the lost because it hit him. Probably, maybe for the first time in his life after having encountered with Jesus, his sin is going to prevent him from eternal life. His sin will result in eternal destruction. See, what you do here on earth does have a bearing on what happens after you die. But so often, we're so busy, we're so caught in our lives, we don't think about eternity. eternity. Zacchaeus was one of them. Until he had the encounter with Jesus, and of course, this man is a man of eternity. This guy is all about holiness. This guy is all about peace and salvation in the world to come. And so during this encounter, it hit him. It hit him. And that's why he wanted to be saved from his eternal destruction. And a lot of people need to be sozo from eternal destruction. Jesus affirmed it. I wonder what encounter does your unchurched friend and unsaved loved one need to go through to realize that they need to be sozo from eternal destruction? Because a lot of our friends, in fact, maybe even some of us, we're so into our life, we, don't, we, we, we lose light of that. And while we think that we're living right, we're actually not living right. And we're moving towards eternal destruction. But we need to be humble. That's why, that's why in a Pentecostal church, there'll be plenty of opportunities to repent again. To say, man, I blew it again. Lord, would you forgive me? Would you receive me back? But not just us. This Mission Sunday, how about our friends out there? A lot of them don't know they're heading to eternal destruction. Zacchaeus did not. A lot of our friends think, hey, I'm fine. I, I, uh, you know, if I live a good life, something good will happen to me, right? Some of our friends have said that. You know, hey, I have not really said, I never murdered anybody. I never did anything really serious. Come on, if there's a real God out there, he'll, 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 he'll exercise the proper justice. Yeah, but by not accepting Jesus, by not coming to him, you're like slapping the one way to God. You're saying that, I don't care what you did 2,000 years ago. I don't care that you die, that you suffer for me. I don't care. That's an offense right there. You not receiving the one way to heaven. How many of our friends are going through that or in that situation? How many of our unsaved loved ones, our family members? We're talking about, you know, if that truly was a prophetic word, and I believe it was because many of you came up here, that it was a fam just been a family mountain that you've been coping with. And the family mountain maybe is leading to eternal destruction. You know what I'm trying to say? 
You know the enemy's behind it. You know the enemy does not want family members getting saved. He's, doing, he's throwing all sorts of roadblocks. And then the biggest one are the conflicts. If you, the one Christian, you're supposed to be the witness, and there's a conflict, how good is your witness? Not very good. I, I try to work out five, six times a week. And um, um, sometimes I'll go running um, at Blaisdell Park in, in Pearl City there because I like the, the road there. It's all marked off the miles. But um, sometimes I don't have much time or it's raining. And then I'll go to um, the, um, the Newtown Recreation Center because living in that area, we, uh, uh, we have automatic membership there. And so, um, so a lot of times I'm there because just go in, quick workout, and then go home, shower, and then, and then do what I need to do. Well, um, because I, I'm there a lot, uh, kind of the, it's the same old time, there's a lot of people that I get to know because, you know, there's six treadmills, okay? So we're all kind of running together, and we all kind of talk and all that. Well, uh, most of the time, Fox News is on, okay? And if it's not, I usually turn the channel to Fox News. I just, that's, that's, that's my channel that I like to watch, right? And, of course, you know, but not just Fox News, just any channel for that matter. You know that there's been a lot of destructions out there, death, premature death, murders, right? Mass shootings in schools and all that. We, we see all that, right? And um, there's one guy, you know, I, you can hear a lot of guys, you know, just go, oh, man, that's so sad. What, those idiots, why are they doing all that stuff, right? But I remember this one guy that, that I work out with a lot, and he's been saying, oh, you know, my, I, I went to that school when I was a kid. I said, yeah? He says, yeah. yeah. That could have been me. Yeah, could be you in a lot of situations. So what happens if it was me? And that's opened the door for me to tell him about Jesus. And, 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 and it's been an ongoing conversation. We've been at this for a few months now. But he's determined he does not want to go into eternal destruction. And thank God, Fox News has opened his eyes to that. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not trying to promote a station and all that stuff, you know, even though it's the most watched station and a lot of Christians work there and blah, 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 and all that. Anyway, you know, let's not do a promo here. But, but it's opened his eyes to eternity because a lot of our friends, a lot of our family members, they're not thinking about it. The enemy kept them so busy with their lives that they're actually heading into eternal destruction without even knowing it. And I believe that People need to have an encounter with Jesus. Jesus can save them from the eternal destruction. Jesus can sozo your family and friends. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And the third, the third meaning of the word sozo is actually a combination of one and two. It's a combination of one and two. It's saved from afflictions and eternity. Saved from afflictions and eternity. What am I trying to say? Okay, back to our opening passage. Okay, our opening passage, we see here that Jesus had, was on a missions trip. Okay, he had just, he and disciples had just gone to the, the, the land of the Gerasenes, and there was a demoniac there. Okay, a guy that was, was, was demonized by at least 2,000 demons. Okay, this was on a missions trip that they were on. Now they were on their way back from the missions trip. Okay, so that's why the opening passage says that Jesus crossed again by boat to the other side. Now he's going back on the Sea of Galilee. That's where they were. They're on the Sea of Galilee, went to the place of the uh, demonia, finished the ministry, and they're, they're on their way back, okay? And it says a great multitude gathered, and then a synagogue leader, a ruler named Jairus came and then said, now, again, Jesus is a superstar in that land. It says, my little daughter lies at the point of death. This is verse 23, okay? You can put that up. That'd be good. My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. You want to take a guess at what Greek word is used here in healed? Sozo. Jesus, my little daughter is about to die. Can you come? Because I know you're the healer. I know you can do things that nobody else can do. So that she may be sozoed. Again, I'm making up, the, you know, adding the ED there, okay? Because in Greek, there's no ED, okay? But she, so that she can be sozoed and she will live. There's the emphasis here, okay? Here's the thing. 
there's an affliction on her. She's about to die. There's danger. She's about to die. But if you can somehow save her from this, it will also save her from eternal destruction. See, some people, they just want to be saved from some danger or affliction, but they're not thinking about eternity. You know what I'm trying to say? A lot of friends are like that. Okay? But Jairus is hitting him. If my, my, my daughter dies, I don't know where she's going. And she could go to hell. And if she goes to hell, all is lost. You know, all is lost. And so, can you sozo her and not only, not only save her physically, save her eternally? You see, it's, it's both now. Both working together. This kind of healing is the kind of healing that leads to somebody's salvation. The leaders I have just uh, recently uh, uh, sat in on my training on that one, learned that one. This word, this kind of healing, out of the four healing Greek words, this one leads to salvation. Last week, I preached a message on Joanna. And um, I'll, I'll just quickly read this one, okay? Luke 8. Okay, just to bring you back from last week's message, okay, when, when it was Mother's Day. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, and I'll just read it really fast. Soon afterward, he went on through cities and, uh, he is Jesus, went, through, went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. So here was Jesus. Understand what's going on. You know, it wasn't just his disciples, but there were women that also went with Jesus in the ministry. One of them is Joanna. Joanna is the wife of Chusa, who is King Herod's household manager, or the guy who stewards all his finances, the guy who's in charge of the household, okay? He's Herod's one of his right-hand people, okay, Chusa. Well, Joanna is the wife of Chusa. Now, why Herod was an enemy of Jesus? So why would all one of his right-hand people's wives be with Jesus? Because it says earlier, she had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. A lot can happen when Jesus does something in your life. You can change your whole life around. She was so, I mean, she's committed to her husband. Her husband, by marriage, she was, he's, he's high up official, makes a lot of money. Like, wow, you know, I'm so glad I'm married to a rich guy. But not just a rich guy, he's in high position because he's like one of King Herod's guys. Why would she leave that? Why would she leave that unless an encounter happened, something supernatural happened? She had been healed of evil spirits and infirmity. Here's another example of sozo healing. She got healed and she got saved. You see, she was just healed and then Jesus just left. It, it was, this healing was so dramatic that she changed her whole life. She's no longer working with the government group. She's now following a band of misfits, because a lot of the disciples were. Why? Because the head of the misfits is the king of kings. He's not just a king of Israel. He's a king of the universe, and he healed her. Sozo, that sozo right there, and that sozo missions. See, that's what sozo missions is, is that you heal the sick so that they can accept Jesus. That sozo missions. Today, Vicky and I were at New Hope earlier this morning. That's why we came in a little bit late, um, and, and uh, we're talking to people after the service and everything, and... Um, one of the New Hope ladies is actually one of the 19 people going on the Thailand trip, okay? Because, you know, we've been doing a lot of things together, our church and New Hope. And, um, and, 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 and she said to me, okay, um, she said, you know why I'm looking forward to the Thailand trip? This is just this morning. She just told me this morning. She said, because I am so prepared to see people in Thailand get healed so they can get saved. I did not say that to her. She said that, you know, on her own. I like, 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 wow, right? That's Sozo Missions. She's planning to bring Sozo Mission to the, to the Thailand and the Malaysia, Malaysia trip. That's what Jesus did. That's what the disciples did in Acts. That's why we hold Healing Friend Days, church. 
so that when people get healed here, then they can have their eyes open to what God can do eternally for them, not just physically here on earth. That's sozo missions. And that's the biblical model. It's that we don't just do healing just so that people feel better. I mean, that's, that's good. That's important too. But what's even more important, it can lead to someone's salvation. Because what good is being healed and you die, you go to hell anyways. <laughs> yeah, you have some temporary relief while you're living on earth, but you still go to hell. But what's even more important is that you get healed spiritually, save you from eternal destruction, and then you go to heaven. That's even better. Hallelujah. So if physical healing on earth can result in somebody's spiritual healing up in heaven, hallelujah, then let's do it. And that's the Bible. That's my doctoral paper, by the way, just to let you know. And, you know, I just want to read this last testimony to end this. Um, on May 7th, so what's the date today? The 19th? 12 days ago. Okay? 12 days ago, uh, Vanessa was with her grandmother. And they were at Pearl Harbor. And, okay, Vicky was there too, of course. And um, so they, they took a picture right at Pearl Harbor. Okay? And, and so then um, Vanessa put it on Instagram. So her and her grandmother. Okay, well, what was it, um, minutes later, how, how long after you got that, 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 that posting? The posting from somebody from California. Oh, and they had another, another posting, okay, 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 another posting, okay, and, and anyways, this girl, um, young woman, I should say now, young woman, um, Put this on her Instagram, May 7th, 2017, okay? So it's the same day, and um, she, she wrote down, the day I will never forget, the day that changed my life and where I decided to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. I never understood what it meant to have a personal relationship with Jesus until I experienced a miracle that happened to me. Growing up, I was told that my left leg was shorter than my right. And so I walked with a limp two years ago. I was back at my home church in Hawaii. My pastor, and then she put in brackets, Vanessa's dad, asked me if I believed in Jesus. I didn't know what he meant. Of course I did. I go to church. I pray before I eat. I am from a Christian family. But then he asked me again, Emily, do you believe, and she put in uppercase, do you believe in Jesus? And those words hit me hard. It's more than just going through the motions. It's about having a personal relationship with him, the one who died on the cross for my sins, the one who loved me before I loved him. So with tears blurring my eyes, I said yes. And right there and then, Pastor Terry prayed over my left leg, and I saw with my very eyes my left leg straighten out to the same length as my right. Pastor Terry didn't even touch me. He just prayed, and I felt this warm sensation cover my whole body, a feeling that's so indestructible, but enough to make me realize that God is real, capital again, is real, okay, uppercase. This could have easily been a few hundred dollars surgery, just to and why would she know that? Because her father is a doctor. Those who don't know who these people are yet, okay, I'll, I'll explain later, okay. This could have easily have been a few hundred dollar surgery just to have my leg realigned, but no. God had a bigger plan for me. He knew I was struggling with my faith, and he showed me through this miracle that he is real, uppercase. And he loves me, all uppercase. He used my birth defect. Birth defect. This wasn't just for a few months. Birth defect. And turned it into a miracle. From that moment on, I knew I didn't want to just know him, but I want to fully believe, uppercase, believe in him, and that I wanted to declare my faith in front of everyone back at home church, at my home church in California. That's Pastor Del Rey's niece. It's Brother Joe's niece. Yeah, niece, right? I got that right, right? Both niece, right? Yeah, because... For those who don't know, Pastor Del Rey and, pa and Joe are related. His sister married his brother. And the grandparents are sitting right there. <laughs> the Chias. Okay? See? He's a family church. I told you. All right? Hallelujah! Pastor and Sister Chias' granddaughter was struggling with her faith. 
Yes, she went through all the motions, but she wasn't saved. That's why when, I, when you hear me meet altar calls in the church, sometimes I say, you may have been going to church for a long time. That doesn't save you. You may know the Bible. It doesn't save you. You may have Christian members in your family. It doesn't save you. You have to work out your own salvation with trembling. That's what the Bible says. And on that day, what convinced her? She's been to church every week. She has to go. Because mom and dad says, you're going to live in this house? You go. Right? That's what, that's what he told me. The, the grandfather told me that. You know? So what happened? On that day, after service is over, I was greeting people like I normally do. And then, and then Joe's sister, the mother, came up to me and said, that, can you pray for my daughter? I said, I would love to. So after I finished greeting people, I, they were waiting right here. I, I was right there. And I prayed for her. And, and Del Ray's, Del, Pastor Del Ray's brother was standing right there, looking like a doctor, <laughs> examining what was going on. And I remember I prayed for her, and sure enough, that leg came out. It's a birth defect. Note that. Birth defect. Came out. And the mother was excited. The, the, the sister was excited. And then he still was just kind of, you know, just checking it out. But then he came up to me afterwards. And doctors are not supposed to do this. I've been learning this from working on my doctoral paper. Doctors are never to attribute a healing to something supernatural. They are not supposed to do that. Right, doctor? You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to. Yeah, not supposed to. Okay? Not supposed to. But he came up to me and said, that was God. That was God. See? And now let me tell you, that was so, so healing. I didn't know at the time. I didn't know her spiritual condition. But to find out now. And it's confirmed because I talked to the Chias about it a few days later, right? They said, yeah, she'd been struggling with her face and all that. See, because, because Jesus healed her, her, her leg, the left leg, she got saved. That's sozo mission. That's what the church is called to do. You know, yes, we are to learn the word and, and, and preach the word to them and all that stuff. And that's all good. And the Bible says to do that. But see, how did they do it in the Bible? They did that, but they also added sozo healing to it. How exciting it is. That's why I tell you guys, when you're in the workplace, in the classroom, if somebody's sick, don't just, don't, don't just pray for them elsewhere. Do it right there and then. Most of them will say yes if you ask them. Me, I pray for you. Like, Ooh. Oh, okay. Because nothing to lose unless you charge them. Okay? But, but, but if you don't, they'll, they'll accept it. And who knows they might get healed. Who knows if they get healed, that opens their eyes to God. What do you got to lose? Most of them will say yes. And if you're, well, I'm kind of gun shy, I'm kind of shy, pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. That's the purpose. Acts 1 8, that you may receive power to be in power so that you can pray for them. We're not asking for a whole sermon and all that stuff. Just pray. You know how to pray. You're a Christian. Just, and if you just know one line, Jesus, heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. And who knows what he can do with that faith of yours? Because your faith can sozo somebody else. Are you with me on this one? Is this something that we can all do? Amen. It's Bible. It's Bible, and it happened right here. It happens everywhere. Lord, thank you for your message right now. And Lord, our Mission Sunday. Thank you, Lord, that you have, you have led us to be a missions church, like every church ought to be. And Lord, with that comes so much excitement, because it's not all about our lives. Lord, when we can be used by you to pray for people, hallelujah, no telling when they can get healed. Right there and then. Some healings will happen instantaneously. Some will happen gradually. But Lord, if we, if we pray and move in this direction, oh God, miracles can happen. And Lord, not just a miracle of somebody getting healed, the miracle of somebody getting saved. So right now, Lord, I want to pray. Would everybody stand up right now? As you're all standing up. I want you to lift up your hand to the Lord right now as I finish my prayer right now. Lift up your hand to the Lord. Lord, as you see the hands being lifted up right now, would you reach down your hand like you did with Peter when he was sinking? I didn't read that passage, but it said that you reached down and you grabbed him. You touched him and then you lifted him back up again. Lord, as our hands are extended out to you right now, would you reach down and touch every hand and anoint us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, so that if we need healing, we will receive it right now. But Lord, if we don't need it, you would anoint us so that, Lord, we can go and pray for somebody else and they will get healed. Anoint us with so-so healing. Anoint us so that we can do so-so missions. That's your will, Lord. A lot of unsafe friends, a lot of family members who don't know you as Lord and Savior. 
And Lord, some of us, we witness to them, hasn't brought them any closer. As far as we can see from with our eyes. But Lord, with Sozo, hallelujah. With you saving people from their danger, saving them from their infirmity, you can save them from their eternal destruction. Hallelujah. So, Lord, as our hands are outstretched towards you, anoint us right now with sozo power. Empower us with sozo power right now, Lord. Even this week, let us find an occasion to go pray for somebody, God. And, Lord, may you work a miracle. Lord, how fortunate it is for us to be used this way. You are mighty to save. You are mighty to move that mountain. You are, you are the one who has conquered the grave. And we thank you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. You're dismissed, but you can sing along with Vanessa if you like. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and Jesus, come.